More than a decade ago, scientists noticed slow variations in Antarctic ice elevation. As it turned out, it was due to active movement of subglacial, river-connected lakes. Whole water systems fill and drain, causing ice movement. There are about 400 of them. And in 2018, two more were added. The NASA IceSat-2 satellite revealed two new isolated lakes that they named Conway and Mercer. They could contain life. And that life might be unique life. Their isolation has led scientists to the assumption that those lakes haven't come into contact with the Earth's biosphere for hundreds of thousands of years. NASA launched the Mercer Lake Research Project to scan the lakes for life and also to study the ice core drilling process before going to the icy moons of Jupiter and Saturn to do the same. But what can be considered as life? What makes Saturn's moon look like a cow's intestine? And why might it be better if we remain ignorant of what's hidden under the ice? First of all, let's find out what's hidden in the Antarctic lakes. For a long time, Antarctica was considered lifeless, and people had very little interest in it. In addition, it's harsh and hard to reach. The average summer temperature is about minus 45 degrees Celsius, and the wind speed is up to 300 kilometers per hour. With the advent of cutting-edge technology, everything changed. The IceSat satellites allow us to look through the ice and measure its thickness. Drilling rigs have made it possible to dig deep holes through the ice to reach down to the water. A really cool tubular robot known as the Deep Cine ROV, the acronym stands for Submersible Capable of Under Ice Navigation and Imaging, is resistant to subglacial pressure and has brought ice samples into the hands of scientists. And scientists discover what they were looking for, life. Life that existed long before us. In Mercer Lake, researchers found frozen remnants of tardigrades, crustaceans, seaweed, and fungi. This tells us that the isolated lakes were originally formed on the surface. Ice covered them, together with everything that didn't manage to get out of the water. And since sunlight stopped reaching the water, the development of life stopped. That's why Russian scientists were impressed by discovering three living bacteria in Lake Vostok. One of the bacteria was previously found in the Himalayan glaciers. The second one raised some questions, as it was related to heterotrophic organisms. That means organisms that eat other plants or animals to survive. That bacillus needs organic food, which just isn't available in Lake Vostok. It remains unclear how it supports its viral activity under such conditions. But the third discovery surpassed them all. It didn't even get a name. That's because its DNA doesn't match any previously known to science. If Antarctica is full of such surprises, what might be hidden in the lakes on the moons of Saturn and Jupiter if there's life? It evolved in a completely different environment. On Enceladus, Saturn's moon, it's quite possible we might find primitive microbes, because the ocean under the moon's ice sheet is very similar to oceans on Earth. It also contains oxygen, hydrogen, carbon, and nitrogen, the basic elements needed to spawn life. Scientists discovered it by analyzing Enceladus' geyser water. Yeah. Enceladus throws up jets of hot salt water up to 200 kilometers above the surface. It significantly simplified the task for Cassini, NASA's interplanetary spacecraft that collected water samples. Data from Cassini indicates that deep in the bowels of Enceladus, there's an environment that could be favorable for supporting extremophilic methanogens. Similar anaerobic microbes are found in the dark depths of the Earth's oceans, in swamps, and even in cow's intestines, where the conditions are rather 
acidic. Speaking of an acidic environment, the subglacial ocean of another moon, Europa, was long considered to be too acidic for life to evolve. There's a high level of sulfuric acid in the water. But recently, NASA scientists discovered that the composition of the water is changing, becoming enriched with chloride and becoming more usable. This is theorized as being due to interactions with volcanic formations in the depths of Europa. If this keeps up, Riftia colonies, aka annelid worms, along with mollusks and crustaceans could develop there, just like on Earth, around undersea volcanic hydrothermal vents. After all, Mono Lake in California also has high pH levels, but it's inhabited by both unicellular and multicellular organisms, including crustaceans and even fish. The only waters that couldn't possibly be the same as on Earth are the waters of Titan, Saturn's moon. Yes, it's known for certain that there are some pockets of liquid water there. Kraken Mare's size is comparable to that of the Caspian Sea, and Lygia Mare is larger than any freshwater lake on Earth. But life <laughs> there is hard to imagine, as these seas aren't made of water. They're composed entirely of liquid methane. Nevertheless, scientists still hope to find living organisms in these methane lakes. Some say that even the simplest organisms could start a closed-loop food chain. They could oxidize inorganic substances and form layers of organic sediment. This could provide food for other organisms, for example, fish-like herbivores. Sediments would become their pastures, and these pastures could attract predators that might be similar to Earth's sharks. Whereas Sarah Blaffer Hurdy, Emeritus Professor of Anthropology at the University of California at Davis, adds, Assuming any of these creatures evolved to be as social, intelligent, and communicative as, say, cetaceans or elephants, and as manipulative, dexterous, and clever as chimpanzees or orangutans, I see no reason why they could not eventually evolve more sophisticated technological and cultural capacities. But so far, that's just a thought. To get the facts, we have to go to the moons and drill through their ice cores. But why might it be a very bad idea? Because even on Earth, doing such a thing could be dangerous. NASA's planning to launch a tunneling robot through Europa's ice. It's being co-developed with the University of Illinois and Johns Hopkins Laboratory. The robot will have to traverse through 30 kilometers of ice. Well, on Lake Ellsworth in Antarctica, the drill failed to cover even three kilometers. The work of the British explorers halted without producing any results. To make sure that won't happen on another planet or moon, NASA suggests equipping the tunnel robot with a nuclear reactor that will melt the ice with its heat. Research by Russian scientists on Lake Vostok in Antarctica stopped for years due to ice pollution as well as the risk of serious contamination of the entire area. And with Titan, things are even more complicated, because we'll need to send the vehicle through liquid methane. At the moment, NASA is looking for a way to send an autonomous submarine to Kraken Mare. The submarine will independently investigate a whole range of chemical phenomena in the seas and send this data back to Earth. This idea was suggested by the Compass Lab scientists who collaborate with NASA. There have been bolder ideas, like a sample return mission to Titan. There's no name for it yet, but funding has already been provided. Any space probe or drone that goes to Titan will have the task of coming back to Earth with a soil sample. But whatever scientists look for, the results could be devastating. And it's almost happened on Earth when Chinese scientists were exploring glacial ice on the Tibetan Plateau. Their goal was to learn about the formation of past environments. They developed their own technique for collecting and processing the ice so that they wouldn't contaminate it and get incorrect results. Scientists analyzed the ice core samples taken in 2015 and discovered that their ages were around 15,000 years. And all this time, it preserved viruses. 
33 genetic codes of viruses, of which only four are known to humankind. Scientists figured out that these viruses not only survived under extreme conditions, but are also still able to infect cells. After 15,000 years, of course, the researchers were very cautious and careful to avoid releasing the viruses from the lab. But do you think mere diligence will be enough when it comes to dealing with the extraterrestrial fragment of matter that NASA is planning to bring to Earth?